Hello, I'm Jay, owner of Volunteer Audio in Oliver Springs, Tennessee. I'm making a short video showing you step-by-step -step how to use Precision Powers HD14 SBS. Now that's Harley-Davidson 14 and newer Saddlebag Speaker Install Kit. So what we're going to show you is how to use their template to cut your lids and add a grill and a lower portion to do what's called a cut kit to add six by nines to your existing bag. No painting necessary. Now watch the process as I show you exactly how to put this in. All right, so the first step, I want you to look inside your bag, make sure there's nothing in there that you're gonna get dirty or damaged in the process of cutting and uh, putting this on your lid. Secondly, close it and latch it back. I want you to take a roll of masking tape and we're gonna mask off the top of the lid. This is just gonna protect the lid from any possible scratches. Our template's gonna do the same thing, but we're really just keeping the vibration of our saw from making our template scratch our lid or scratch our paint. So, this doesn't have to be perfect, but if you can keep it from having a bunch of humps in it, it is going to make your template lay down a little bit better. I'm going to go ahead and remove this seat for a better visual so you can see it better. All right, so I took the seat off so we'd have a better view so you can see what I'm taping and what exactly we're cutting. Now we're just going to do the first probably two-thirds of the bag here because we're not going to be doing anything in the back to possibly scratch it. I have done this process with the bag off of the bike, but after doing mini bikes, I feel it's a lot better to do it with it still installed. It's going to hold it really good and steady for you. It doesn't take two people that way. And we're going to leave the handle on in this process. So the Precision Power Kit is very nice in the sense that it does not require the removal of the side handle. And I've actually gotten to the point that the kits that do require it, I just cut them in the shape of the Precision Power one because it works better. All right. So in your kit, you're going to end up with three parts. You're going to get this template, which we're fixing to screw on here. But you're also going to get the grill that's going to go on after we've cut it out and the part that goes underneath that sandwiches it together. Now I want to point out a few things about the Precision Power Kit. If you'll notice it actually has a much wider flange than most of the other kits. Now I think it looks really nice once it's installed, but this is important because we have a lot larger area gasketed to keep water from getting in our bag. It also gives us a stronger part because this is all that's really holding our speaker into the bag and keeping everything in place. The other side is also gasketed. And these two, once we've got it cut, are going to fit together and four Phillips screws are going to hold this together and make a really tight bond. So, it's going to come with the necessary hardware needed to install these and I'm going to go ahead and get in the bag of hardware and remove the two shiny Phillips screws. They only give you two, so you're going to reuse them on the other side when you get to doing the other bag. Let's grab a drill. All right, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your template, you're gonna set it down, and you're just gonna kind of push it till you see that it's fit right along that factory line, that factory body line that's in this bag. Once you've got it where it goes, screw this down. This is gonna make sure it doesn't move during the cutting process. And this whole part's gonna be thrown away at the end, so it doesn't matter that we screwed some holes into it. All right, so next we're going to take a drill. Uh, I just grabbed a drill bit close to the size here. It's not a specific size. We're only drilling a starter hole to be able to drop our blade in from our saw. I'm going to drill one up here at the top, and I'm going to drill another one here at the side. I do that because these two corners are 90 degree turns that are very hard to do with your saw. So I'm going to cut up here, and then I'm going to go to the bottom, and I'm going to finish it out, and that way we don't have to try to make those turns. All right, so I've drilled two holes in the top of this 
lid for access to our bit. Now I want to go over this template. I've used all the different brands and what I like most about the Precision Power template, it's very, very accurate. If you'll cut the very outside edge all the way around, as long as you cut it like the template shows it, it fits perfect when you're done. Some of the other ones, if I cut the outside edge, it's kind of sloppy. I don't like a lot of slop in the fitment of this grill. And again, it's going to have a wider flange, so we have a better mount, but also it fits tighter when we're done. Let me grab our saw. All right, so you're going to use some sort of a saw to cut or scroll cut around the top of this. Now you could use a regular jigsaw. I know it's more likely that most people have a jigsaw in their garage, so I wanted to show it to you. And no doubt you could fit it around through here and you could cut this out. If you have a tour pack that's still on, I find it's a lot easier to use a one-handed sawzall, and it's still my choice even without the tour pack. So I'm going to use this one-handed Milwaukee sawzall with a jigsaw style blade to cut this hole out. Now, there's not necessarily one tool that could do this or many different saws, so you're going to have to use what tool you have available. All right, so I'm going to drop into that pre-drilled hole. I'm going to cut down to this first corner, and then I'm going to turn around and I'm going to cut around down to the next 90 degree. Now, as you come up on these connector parts, you're just going to cut straight through them. So now I'm going to turn around and come back the other way. So I've cut the outside edge of the template up through here. I followed this sweeping curve all the way down to our bottom. And I wanted to show you, it's really hard to get your saw to cut this tight 90 on either end. So we're gonna drop back into the side, into our pre-drilled hole, and we're gonna cut back to that corner. So I've made it to that corner. I'm going to turn around and go back the other way. All right, so I'm going to stop here for a second because I've cut through every one of these little pieces that are holding our two templates together. I'm coming up on the last one. So I'm going to go ahead and cut through it, but I'm going to hold the template with my hand to make sure that it doesn't move as I cut through the last part that was holding it in place. All right, so just like that, we have cut all the way through. And there's the hole that we were looking for. So we're going to remove the template. I'm going to take and vacuum up our mess and untape it and get ready to put together our grill. Now at this point would be a good point if you're not sure if you've cut it right. You can go ahead and take your grill, you can fit it in, make sure that it drops in all the way around. Normally I'll open it up, look at it from the back side, double check that everything clears. It looks good, so I'm ready to clean it up, untape it, and get ready to put our grill in place. So I vacuumed out the debris, now I'm just going to go ahead and untape the top of the lid. This is a pretty much brand new 2022 Road King. So it doesn't have many scratches from boots yet going over the lid. And we want to make sure we don't add any to it. So we're on tape and we're ready to fit our lid or grill on again. So I'm going to put it on, fit it, flip it open, 
and you're going to see that it lines up real nice with what we just cut. And now we're going to take the base or the bottom side of it and we're going to fish it in here. And you're going to see it lines up pretty well. Now it comes with some hardware. We're going to use the four Phillips screws that have the standard sized head. It doesn't have a flange on it. There aren't going to be any washers needed. And we're going to start each one of these screws from the inside piece to the outside. So I'm just starting each screw, making sure as I do it that the grill is still in the correct placement. Alright, so now that all four are started, I'm going to start tightening them up. And we're going to tighten them till you see it pulls the inside uh, portion even or all the way down to this outside portion. You don't want to over tighten it and that's why I'm using hand tools. You're not going to want to use a drill in this. It is plastic and we do not want to strip it out and we don't want to break it. So we've got our four screws tight. We've got a really good look. It looks like a CVO style lid. It wraps along the front just like the CVO does, but there's a lot of advantages to this versus buying a boom style lid. First off, it's gonna hold a six by nine, not a five by seven. It also angles that speaker, if you notice, at about a 15 to 20 degree angle toward you for better sound. I think Precision Power has done an excellent job on this grill cut kit setup much better than some of the other ones that I've used in the past. Also, if you were to buy the Precision Power, it's the MAS 694 or 692. That six by nine is gonna to mount to this perfectly and you're gonna have a great watertight seal. Now they are sold by themselves, so you could use other six by nines, but keep in mind, not all six by nines have the same style flange. And at volunteeraudio.com, our company, we also keep the spacers uh, made by American Hardbags to go with this to adapt to some of the other ones that don't have a flat top. So I hope this video has encouraged you. I hope it's shown you what you need to know about how to add speakers to your lids. A lot of people worry about getting water in the bags and if you do this process right, use quality components with a good gasket, we're not gonna get water inside. Uh, if you go to our website, it's www.volunteeraudio.com, you'll find these kits in our motorcycle section. We've got them with and without speakers and it's very simple, you can just search the keyword cut kit and you're going to bring these up for the 1998 to 13 models and in this case the 14 and newer models. So thank you for watching. I hope this has helped you. I hope it's given you some information you didn't have. If this is outside your wheelhouse, if it's something you said, you know what, I don't want to do it. I bought my new bike, it's very expensive paint and I'm worried about it. Reach out to us. Ship it to me. I don't mind at all. Uh, we'll work out a little bit of labor cost, but we'll do the cutting for you and ship them back to you so you don't have to worry about it. Or better that yet, we're right outside of the Great Smoky Mountains. Make a day of it, come down and ride, enjoy the mountains, and come see us and let me do it for you. Please subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching. Like the video, comment if you have any questions, and let me go over our contact info again. You can call us at 1-844-30-AUDIO, email us at sales at volaudio.com, or find any of this at volunteeraudio.com. Also in the description, there'll be links to this kit, and we'll do some links to the ones with speakers as well. Again, thanks for watching, and God bless.